Hey, how's it going? I'm Ira Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so I'm sure you can tell I'm trying something a little bit different in terms of location today. Um, that's partly because I know when I've been doing it on the bed, the camera's not been completely level and it might well be annoying some people that, you know, the camera is a little bit crooked in terms of how it's focusing on me. So I'm now on the floor in front of the bed, in case you can't tell. <laughs> so the camera should be as level as it can be. Um, I just want to see if it sort of makes a... It makes for a nicer frame, makes for a nicer shot, and I'm not worrying quite so much about making sure my bedside table is empty of stuff <laughs> um, before having to do this. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, 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 uh, today's topic is talking a little bit about my editing process. Um, that's what I said it would be at the end of the last one. I have a feeling I probably did something very similar um, sort of in the lead up to or just after Hyena Boy was released. Um, so I apologise that I'm rehashing an old topic again, but at the same time, how I think about editing constantly changes in the same way that how I think about writing constantly changes and evolves as I, as I get older, get more experienced, um, you know, my I have different ideas about how I want to do certain things. Um, so I'm going to talk very specifically about my editing process for The Colours I See, which is the book I'm still hoping will be out by December. <laughs> um, it's getting really close to the crunch time now, uh, so I'm not as confident as I was that I will make it. But a lot of that has been down to the fact that I've moved this year. I've had a lot of painting and decorating and stuff going on this year, um, so I've not had the kind of free time that I had last year um, in order to get the editing process done. Um, the Colours I See is also a much longer book than Hyena Boy was, so there's all, a lot more to edit, a lot more to go through. Um, so yeah, there, there are reasons why it's taken this long um, and why I haven't actually published it yet. Um, I'm hoping it's this edit through and then one more edit through and then just making the cover, making the back uh, cover and deciding whether I want to go with Lulu again or if I want to actually try going through Amazon's um, publishing uh, thing, I, which I can't remember the name of right now. Um, and the reason I'm sort of considering um, going with them this time <clears throat> rather than with Lulu is I think they've got better management for, for sort of advertising um, things and they've got better sort of early promotional things that you can sort of do in order to get people interested in trying trying out your work. Um, so the one sort of major thing that I'm, I'm fairly certain of is with Lulu, um, you cannot make your ebook free, uh, not even for like a short period of time. Their minimum that you can go down to, I think, is like 79p. Um, <clears throat> you can't make it cheaper than that um, because that is their costings um, for, for it. So you can't make it cheaper than that. So you can't do a a limited time only, I'm going to do it for free so that, you know, try to build an audience because people like free things. Um, whereas I know that is actually one thing you can, I'm pretty certain, can do um, with the Amazon publishing, which is you can uh, make your book free uh, for, for a limited amount of time. It's a great way of launching your book and getting um, an audience when you're not necessarily somebody who has a huge audience that's just going to buy you, you know, buy this unknown person off the rack. Um, so that's kind of my biggest bait as to whether or not uh, to to go uh, to to stop being loyal to Lulu and, and to move over to to Amazon. Um, I certainly know that the colours I see is initially just going to be ebook only. Um, 
until I work out whether or not there is an audience for it um, who would want a paperback uh, version because a paperback version is not going to be as cheap as I can make the other two. Um, my other two, I mean Echo and Hyena Boy because, I mean, Echo is not a huge book itself. Um, Hyena Boy is shorter than Echo. I can get the price of both of those down quite a lot while still making a good enough profit on each book. And it's not a lot. I, I like minimize it down so that I'm not making very much on each of my books. Like everything else is making more of my books than I am if they do sell the paperback versions. Um, so like I'm, I'm trying like really hard to make my books affordable for people who want to take a chance on a new writer whilst you know still being able to get some money off the book myself that's worthwhile getting off the book myself um so i think high in a boy is less than eight pounds and echo is less than nine um but as i said they're both comparatively speaking short books um so i don't think i'm going to be able to reduce uh the colors i see by enough to be able to kind of go, hey, yeah, you want to take a chance on this. Um, and so just having an ebook only makes a lot more sense um, as a starting point, which is, and in some ways, it's a little bit sad because it would be nice to sort of have the paperback version there as well. Um, but if I can't do that initially, then I can't do that initially. Um, and as I said, it's, I, want to, I don't want to say it's my own fault for, for writing a longer book. The book is, I mean, it gets me in the feels every single time. Um, the the amount of time you spend with these characters and the things you learn about these characters. I feel like you get really close to these characters by the time you reach the end of the book. And every single time I go through it, I get hit by the same moment. Um, and then I'm, uh, during this particular edit through, um, I've also been hit by, by other moments because I've suddenly gone, oh wow, because I I made that change, you know, a couple of runs ago, or I made this decision a couple of runs ago, suddenly this character is X, Y, and Z, and I understand, and this moment actually really works in context when you kind of know the whole story, or almost the whole story, because I am still writing the, the fourth book, so I don't know the whole story myself yet, but in terms of, you know, within the context of the book, in terms of the context of the collection as it is so far, you, know, you get really hit by the, by different moments and it, it amazes me like when I go through just how much I am sort of affected and I know I'm the one writing it and I know I have to kind of care about it in that sort of that sort of way but I think it's a good sign when you can care about it in that sort of way um but it, as, as I, I keep saying it is a longer book so in order to be able to make it more affordable for people to take a chance on Ebook only to begin with seems like the, the most sensible option, which is what I tried with Echo as well. Um, and then if I start getting enough interest and enough sales, um, which hopefully if I, you know, if I use the right format and the right sort of advertising way of, of doing it this time, then I might be able to kickstart a bit more interest to begin with. Um, Certainly, if it kicks, starts a bit more interest in Hyena Boy and uh, particularly Hyena Boy, but Echo as well, um, then I might kind of go, yeah, you know what? There's 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 enough an audience here. Here's a paperback version. Anybody who wants a paperback version, because I know there's still a lot of people out there who prefer having paperbacks to, to having like digital versions of it, because you know it's it makes life. Um, there's something about having a physical book, and not everybody like likes e-readers. Um, and stuff like that but in terms of you know trying to to, to sort of build build things up then yeah I, I definitely think ebook is the way to go to begin with uh, because it is it is a long one um and yeah it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how that sort of goes and i know that's sort of talking more about like the pro publishing decisions that i'm going to be having to make soon rather than talking about the editing process but it's something that's had to that's had occurred to me as i've been doing the editing process um so now i should be talking about what this video is actually supposed to be about i guess um so my editing process with the colours I see has been um, so the first time I went through and the second time I went through, um, I went through and I made 
major overhauling changes um, to, to the book. So like my first edits are always about doing the big changes, the things that are going to change the story the most, the things that have the most impact on the characters and the plot and where things are going. So basically anything that has occurred to me since I got to the end, anything that occurred to me as I was writing my way through it, so feeding back and adding in details earlier on for things that I've altered later on in the story, um, or that I've rethought X, Y, and Z because of stuff that happens in another book in the collection or the, the, the next book in the collection. Um, so yeah, the, the first couple of edit throughs are big overhauling edits. They're the ones that take the most time. They're the ones that you're spending so long in each each individual chapter, making sure that everything sort of sites well, making sure that all of these, you know, dramatic changes are taking place. And then the next couple of edits are all about small tweaks. So you know, I'm reasonably happy usually at this point with how the story is and all the plot points in the story. I'm happy that, you know, I've got everything sounding the way that I want it to, that it's consistent, that I haven't got any major over, you know, glaring errors anywhere um, in terms of um, uh, continuity, <laughs> that's the word I was looking for, in terms of continuity or anything like that. So yeah, the second couple of edits, they tend to be the sort of finer detail edits. They tend to be a little bit faster because I'm not looking for like, the, you know, big chunks of dialogue to change. Might like a bit of a small bit here and there. It's sort of tidying it up. It's getting it to flow a bit better. It's getting it to sound a bit sharper. Um, sometimes I can do like a major change uh, during these edits, but it tends to be a major change within a chapter rather than a major change within the entire plot of the story. Um, so then after I've done those and I'm sort of happy with like the, all the minor edits and I don't think there's going to be any major, major overhauls of anything, um, apart from I might suddenly decide that I want to have a chat, uh, have a chat to have a paragraph that sounds slightly different or to have a slightly different focus or, you know, something like that. Once I'm sort of down to that point where it's kind of like, it's it's more kind of like surface level things. Um, and the deep sort of, these are the things I need to fix. These are the, uh, the you know, the things that I need to, to smooth out and get getting off really good. Um, that's when I start doing the voice reading edits. Um, so I use the voice reader on the, my word document to to go through and read it and it's not the best thing in the world because there are certain words it will say wrong there are certain words that it says wrong so every single time i get to that word i have to double check that it is the right word <laughs> i'm like do i have the wrong word there? and it's like every time i go through i find that i end up checking the same word um every single time um, or every single time I get to that particular word or words, um, I'm like, I just want to double check that I've definitely got the right word there, uh, because I have discovered since I started doing this, this, um, particular way of editing things that I, I do occasionally put the wrong word in because it happens. Um, it's one of the reasons why I sort of started doing the, the voice reading thing to begin with, just to sort of double check that I have the right words. <laughs> um, but again, this, this can be a bit of a slow process. I discovered that I can actually listen to it slightly faster than I was initially. So that that sped things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, most of the things that I do during this is making sure that I've got the right words, making sure that things sound right. So this is where I might move where my sentences are and where my commas are. So like something might go from being two sentences to actually going, no, actually that sounds better if this is one sentence and it's a comma instead of a full stop. Alternatively, it's like, actually, that might sound a bit punchier if you make it two sentences rather than one long sentence. So, yeah, this this is more about how it's sounding, um, making sure the, the words and the spellings are correct. I still miss things. This is why I have to do it more than once. Um, and I still miss things. <laughs> um, but it, it's all about how it's sounding. You know, is it, is it tight? Is it, does it read well? Uh, does it make sense? Um, and sometimes that requires me because like as I said the voice reader itself isn't great so sometimes it makes things sound weird so you then have to go back and read that sentence to make sure it does make sense and then you play it again and it's like oh yeah no 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 it, it's fine it's just because my brain is still in the previous sentence or, or whatever else um 
especially when it's sort of like going slightly faster, I've, I've noticed that I do have to do that a little bit more. Uh, usually I don't have to do much in terms of major edits during this bit. I do occasionally, and then I have to like voice read over whatever section I've changed to sort of to sort of tidy it up and, and getting it sounding better and making it sound a bit more consistent. And, and you know, it, it, it's not so much like the changing focus stuff like the earlier edits are or the like the big overhauling stuff like the earlier edits are. It's more about making sure it sounds right. And sometimes that requires changing paragraphs, sometimes it, it requires clearing up who's speaking when and, and stuff like that. So it's, it is really useful. It is a very useful way of, of editing. And it's, there's a reason I kind of have it and reserve it as kind of my last, um, one of my last ways of editing. Um, and then during kind of way and during um, Echo, I also did a Grammarly edit. Now, I don't pay for Grammarly, so it's just literally the surface stuff. Um, my Grammarly keeps crashing on my laptop now. <laughs> it keeps crashing and it, it, it doesn't like Word very much. Um, I think it just doesn't like the size of my documents um, because it's, it's not really designed, I don't think, for, you know, quite such major documents. Um, I think I may have to reattach it to, to my word in order to do a, a Grammarly Passover just to make sure I haven't missed anything major, but Grammarly Passovers can be really annoying. Um, and I'm hoping the, the voice editing through is actually a better way of doing it than, than doing the Grammarly, because as I said, I can hear if I've got the right thing or not. Um, yeah, okay, maybe my grammar isn't the best, but it's also about voice. Um, and this is something that I have debated a little bit with a, a, with a friend of mine, um, the one who, who helped me with, with my, my cover work. Um, it's uh, sometimes, even though you're not saying something grammatically correct, um, in, in terms of, of traditional grammar, it might be correct in terms of the voice of your character. And I sometimes think it's more important to get it to sound like your character than it is necessarily to have it grammatically correct. Um, and yes, that does mean that a lot of my work does share a lot of grammatical uh, inconsistencies and doesn't necessarily say things, you know, in a grammatically correct way. Um, but it does sound like the character, it does sound like it's coming from the character. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons why, yes, there are a lot of benefits to using uh, Grammarly to, to go through and pass over. Um, but it will pick up on things uh, that you're kind of like, no, that's correct. Why are you picking up on that? Um, and sometimes it won't pick up on things that it should pick up on. Um, and I don't know if it's just because I've got like, the unpaid version. Um, and it doesn't do like the advanced stuff. But yeah, honestly, when I went through with uh, the the words own checker, I, th I felt like that was a better way of doing it <laughs> because then you can like go, no, it completely ignore this thing that I do repeatedly because it's correct in terms of the characters and how I'm telling the story. Please ignore it, um, which you can't do that. You can't do that with Grammarly. You can't go, no, this 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 is a this is a decision thing. This is a, this is a you know this is a, a writing decision thing. Please please ignore it. Um, I do think the one thing that Grammarly can do that words spell check can't do is making sure that your voice is consistent so that you're not using Americanisms when you don't want to be using Americanisms. Um, I say when I, I don't want to be using Americanisms specifically because I do have an American or um, some American characters <laughs> in both Hyena Boy um, so obviously also in The Cause I See there are uh, one of the main characters, uh, Talora, is American born so Actually, I do want the Americanized version of certain things for her because it's to do with like her accent and how she speaks and, and stuff like that. Um, but it's you know about making sure that I don't have it where I don't intend it to have because um, I do speak in a more Americanized way. <laughs> as has been pointed out to me um, many a time. Um, 
So I don't always know when I'm using like the right the right words. Um, so that can be a bit interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting better now at sort of double checking certain things and making sure that it's what I want it to be anyway. So I'm less worried about that um, than I necessarily was on, on previous iterations. Um, previous, uh, yeah, <laughs> previous times that I have edited through things. So I, I'm debating whether or not to do a, a Grammarly check with, with this one. Um, just because I think the voice read is probably a better way of doing it. Um, I do pay more attention to what's going on and it does contextualize the sentences because Grammarly doesn't necessarily read things in context. Um, like I said, sometimes it will pick up on something and it'll be like, no, that is correct for the sentence that it is within, but because you've got a comma somewhere or because it doesn't, it's not reading the full sentence, like it's, you know, it's supposed to be reading the full sentence, but it's not always reading the full sentence. And um, yeah, then it's it's not as good, I think, as it tries to be, um, just because I don't think it's really designed to be used with story writing it's i think more of a um assist for document writing and for email writing um, and stuff like that so yes it can be helpful in one ways but it's not as helpful as it could be and actually you know what i think i've got a good grasp on what i'm doing now and i can find ways of, of not necessarily using grammarly um or doing an edit through might might regret that at a later date um but as i said it, it it's it's time to human going through it and sometimes the things that it picks up on is like no why why are you picking up on that stop consistently picking up on that it's incorrect every single time you pick up on it <laughs> it's it's incorrect in terms of how this is written um so yeah, and, and as I said, if it wasn't for the fact that it does keep crashing and it doesn't seem to like Word very much at all um, at the moment, and I don't know, as I said, if that's because of the size of my documents or if it's just, I don't know, I don't know, but whatever it is, um, I think I may skip over doing the, the Grammarly um, edit through because I have already done sort of a word spell check <laughs> um and like i said i'm on second to last uh voice read through of, of it now i want to do one more after this is finished because i have edited a few bits um edited a, a, a few more complicated bits just to sort of smooth it out and get it sounding a little bit sharper and a little bit better and a little bit tighter um so I definitely want to do one more voice read through just to make sure those bits are sounding okay um, and sort of double check those bits and then I might go through the spell checker again um, just in case um, and then be thinking about covers. <laughs> thinking about covers and where exactly I'm going to publish this one. As I said, I'm fairly certain you can do sort of like a more promotional stuff with Amazon than you can with Lulu um, and I, as I said I'm fairly certain you can do a this is going to be free for x number of days um, in order to spark interest um, in your work which you definitely can't do with, with Lulu at all um, so yeah yeah that's that's where I am with everything at the moment um, so fingers crossed, hopefully be able to get it out by December, by the beginning of December. Um, whether or not I make it uh, was yet to be seen, but touch wood, nothing going wrong, and December should be good. <laughs> All right, All right, okay, so um, the next one is entitled The Unexpected. Um, I kind of have an idea of what I want, where I want to go with that. At the moment, it's kind of more grounded in 
non-writerly stuff, but by the time I come to do it, I might change my mind a little bit. It might be a bit of both. Um, but yeah, the next one at the moment is working under the assumption that I'm going to be talking about unexpected things, as in unexpected things that you know come up in your in your life that kind of change how things are going. Um, yeah. So with that said, I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. Um, I hope that it's a good way of getting you kind of excited about the idea that I am publishing a new book soon. Um, certainly the idea that it will be, hopefully, fingers crossed, if I work out how to do everything correctly, free for a limited amount of time to begin with so that people can, you know, check it out without taking risk uh, financially because yeah I'm, I'm very big on that I, I want people to appreciate my work obviously I want to eventually make a profit from my work but I want people to be able to appreciate my work and word of mouth is one of the biggest ways of you know getting people interested in your work and people are more likely to take an interest if you know they don't have to pay anything you know and yeah so yeah, we'll see how that all goes. <laughs> that's that's all I can really say right now, to be honest. Um, okay, so with that said, hope you guys have found this one interesting. Hope you guys are looking forward to the next one, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.